Good morning, everyone. Welcome to week si seven, sorry, seven of um, Gracious Grove Sew Along. We are now done with all of our pieced blocks and we're ready to start the applique blocks. We'll be doing one applique block each week for the next four weeks, one pattern, but some of them we do two blocks with different colorways. For example, this quilt, this block up here in the corner is repeated in this other corner. Same with this one. This block is done twice. And then the center block, we only do one of. So there's four applique patterns, but we're going to make seven blocks with those patterns. Today I'm going to teach you the first part of the applique uh, section, which will teach you how to shape all of your shapes so that you can start your blocks. We won't be doing the, um, the vines or the stems with the bias tape this week. We'll do that next week so that you'll have something new to learn next week. So you can get started on your other shapes. And the things that we're going to need today are, um, you're going to need some maker paper. This is the product that we make our templates out of. You'll need either an applique set or all of the items that are in it, which are my Appliglue, a quilter's digit, a starch brush, and then the other things that come in it are the uh, polka dots and the needles, and those are what we use for the sewing part. There's everything that you need. Um, as far as tools for prepping your applique pieces. All right, you will also need some spray starch or an ironing um, spray of some kind. You can use uh, Best Press or Magic Sizing or even just plain water, but I find that starch works best. Okay, let's get started. So your pattern has in it the applique shapes page, and um, I want you to take this to your printer or you can trace by hand and use your maker paper you can put your maker paper over that and just trace all of these shapes or you can just uh, put it on your printer and print it out right on the um, dull side of your maker paper. And that's what I've done here. So I've got one sheet on maker paper that has all my patterns on it. The other things in your pattern are the placement diagrams. We have block six, block seven, block eight, and block nine. Now today, we are going to work on block eight. And the reason is because block eight is the only one that does not have bias tape in. I'm going to be giving you a lot of information today. So I felt like it'd be best to just work on the pieces for block eight. And then next week, we can uh, continue on with some of these that have the uh, shapes with the bias tape using the vines and the stems. So here is our sheet of applique shapes, patterns that are printed onto my um, maker paper. Now the maker paper has a slick side or a um, plastic coated side and then a regular paper side. Make sure you print on the paper side. And then put another piece of maker paper on your ironing surface, shiny side down, shiny side down, both of them, and then press until those fuse together. And that's just going to give us an, a little extra um, thickness for our pattern so that when we cut them out we can reuse them several times. And just press that until it sticks together. And then you just pull it off your ironing surface and you're ready to use that. Now I've got piece J cut out and that's the piece we're going to use in um, this block number nine. And it says to cut orange hound's tooth we need to cut six. So I will put this on the wrong side of my fabric and I like to um, place it kind of on the diagonal. It doesn't really matter, but um, it's just something I've always done and it gives, it's more interest on the shape of the piece with the pattern of the fabric. And it's also, um, you have a bias edge on the side which curves better. When I cut it out, I'm going to cut about a quarter inch beyond the fabric, I mean beyond the pattern, so that I have a seam allowance all the way around except for where I have a dotted line. Now you can see that this edge on my template has a dotted line on it, see that? That means I don't need seam allowance there, so I'm going to cut the fabric off even with the pattern, and then just cut around so that I have a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around my shape. Okay, my shape is ready to have the edges prepared, so the first thing I need to do is get some spray starch, and I'll just spray a little bit of it into a container, and you'll see that it's really foamy because it's got a lot of air in it, and as the air falls out, it will just look like water. It's just going to be a liquid. Then I use my little starch brush to paint the edge of that seam allowance all the way around and just kind of get that edge wet. 
and I use my quilter's digit in my left hand because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you, you are going to just do the opposite of what I do, but in my left hand, I have my quilter's digit. I put it in the palm of my hand, and then when I turn my finger over, I'm able to just use that point to help me hold my shape in place and pull the edge up over the top so that I don't get burned. Now you're going to want to, when you pick up an item like this, you're going to want to put it in your hand like a pencil and in your dominant hand, but put it in your left hand in the palm, like I said, and then it'll be ready to go. And then I just take my iron and just push the edge of that uh, seam allowance up over the top of my applique shape. And as I move towards the center, I just push the edge underneath my iron. And what I'm trying to do is crease that outside edge, a nice sharp crease, and get that starch all dry. And I'm going to move around my shape and that way I don't get burned and I'm able to um, control the, the shape a little better. And then I press it from the top and there's my shape with the edges all turned, all the raw edges are on the inside, nice smooth edges on the outside. And then when it cools a little bit, I can remove my template and my shape is all turned, ready to go. One of the other shapes that this block uses is a K, and it's just the center circle of the flower. So I'm going to prep that piece now. And as I move my iron around the circle, I just pull my fabric up over tight against the template and um, with my little quilter's digit and that will make, give me a nice smooth edge on the outside. This is a bigger circle. Make sure you leave your iron there long enough for that starch to dry so that those edges don't pop back up again. And then press from the top. And then that shape's all done with all nice smooth edges. And then we'll remove the template and the edges stay turned. Okay, we're ready to, let me show you how you apply them to your block. Now, I've got my base for my block and the pattern calls for you to cut this base out 13 inches square. When we're done um, with, the quilt, with the stitching on it, after you've got your applique pieces all done, then you're going to trim it down to 12 and a half inches. I like to have a little bit of extra because sometimes the stitching will shrink your block a little bit. So be aware of that when you're placing, that you have extra fabric so that we, in order to get everything centered, I like to press this block just lightly in half, both directions, so that I can tell where the center is. Because I'm going to use the center as a guide rather than the outside edges because I have extra fabric there, okay? All right, now let me move my iron out of the way. And here's my placement. Uh, diagram, which I have darkened with a Sharpie marker so that you could see it, and that, that does make it easier, so you can darken yours if you want, or you can use a light box. Um, just make sure that you're centered and that your fabric goes a little beyond. Can you see this darkened line? The dotted line is your seam allowance, your stitching line. The dark line is where you're going to trim to, so make sure you're well beyond that on all four sides, and that's kind of centered in the, in the block. And then you're ready to place these. And we know that these, um, these ones with the hound's tooth go on the outside edge. And the ones that I've made here using the uh, orange rose will go on the center. So we're going to glue these down with my apple glue. This is the um, uh, apple glue which I've developed. It's a basting product that is just a temporary bond, but it allows me to keep everything in place so that I can do my stitching without adding one piece at a time. And I just put a tiny dot of glue in the seam allowance of the piece about every half inch or so and then follow the placement diagram and just stick them on there. You don't need very much glue, it's very sticky. Every half inch to inch. And make sure when you're placing these that your raw edge goes beyond where your 
center will cover it up. So I can see underneath here with it where the center is and I'm pushing my raw edge beyond that. Okay, we'll get all those pieces glued down and then the block will be ready. Okay, another piece that is used in this block is number L, number. <laughs> well, it's piece L and uh, we're going to put that on some green mini fabric, the mini print. And we do four of these. The, uh, this one has a solid line all the way around, so we're going to need a seam allowance all the way around. Um, remember on, that, on those petals we had a dotted, line, dotted edge on one of the edges, and that, that's because it goes underneath another piece, so it doesn't need a seam allowance. And let me, let me pull that back in. So this piece that had the dotted edge on it, let me see if I've got the pattern here. Let me show you this. When I cut this out, I didn't cut any extra fabric on this edge. So as I turned it, all of these edges that had the solid line are turned, but the edge with the dotted line is not, because that is going to go underneath another piece. Piece K is going to sit on top of it. But L is, needs all of the edges turned, so I've got a seam allowance all the way around it. Okay, let's prep this piece. Get our starch and paint that on the seam allowance just till it gets the edge wet so it'll hold a nice crease and then leave your iron there long enough for that to dry and as I'm pressing the next adjacent edge I hold this one down push this one over it and then start moving around the curve so that I have a nice smooth edge And here's another trick. When you get to the edge of your applique shape, right there, continue that crease all the way down. If you don't continue that crease, you will have, you won't have a nice sharp point. And then this edge I'm going to flip up over the top. And sometimes you'll have a little extra fabric. Let's see, did I on this one? No, not really. But sometimes when you're doing a point, now this is a 90 degree angle, so you won't have much extra. But sometimes you'll have a little extra fabric that will stick out here, a little flag. Don't worry about that. Leave that out. We're going to fix that when we, when, we, um, when we stitch. We can tuck that little bit of fabric underneath when we stitch. But that's the prepped piece. We need four of those. Okay, so we have block eight all glued up and ready for us to stitch. Make sure that as you're placing these out pieces that are on the outside edge that you're not encroaching on where your seam line will be eventually. So we're ready to stitch. I'm going to use my bow and needles that were in my applique set. And I've got some Arafil thread here. And I just want to show you this needle threader because it's so cool. This is made by Bowen. It's not my product, but I do really love it. Um, I'll, we'll get a close up of that later, but let me just show you the thread. So this is, um, you, you want to use thread that matches your applique so that your stitching doesn't show. And so I wanted to show you Quilter's Palette because it's a great collection of Arafil that has a wide range of colors so you always have the right color of thread. Okay, I want to show you this needle threader. This is a, a product of Bowen and they also make my needles but I really like this product. And um, you cut your thread right there. It's got a little cutter. Put your thread into the thing and I've got my needle just dropped down into this uh, side of the needle thread. There's two sides. This one's for small needles and this one's for large. Push the button and then my needle is threaded. Really simple. Okay, in order to stitch, I like to use a polka dot on my finger. And this is a little sticky thimble that I place on the end of my finger. It allows me to stitch and push the back of my needle so that I don't get poked. I've got my needle right here. I'm going to Fix the thread, there we go. And I'm going to tie a knot in one end, and uh, one end of the thread. And then I come up from the back, the wrong side of my project, through the background, up out the top edge. Now I push my needle and come right out the very fold of the applique, and then reach under the fold and come out the fold. And just, it's a very simple little uh, hidden stitch that will tur uh, turn that edge down and allow your, your thread not to show. And 
stitch your applique down. Now you need to stitch down all of your appliques because this basting glue, apple glue is just a basting. It's not uh, permanent, so you do need to stitch. And you know, if you want to stitch by machine here, you certainly can. Uh, this is just my favorite method. And that's the way you're going to stitch your pieces down. Okay, so get block eight done, get your pieces prepped and glued down and then stitched. And next week we will go back to working on number six. And so you need to do two of these. Remember two colorways, there's this one. And then the other colorway is this one that has the little floral in the center. Get those stitched up this week and I'll see you back here next week.